Hi YouTube, Luminous Star here. Welcome to my channel, Luminous Star. If this is your first time, welcome to Luminous Star and come back again, may I suggest, as a new subscriber. <laughs> okay guys, for current subscribers, mwah, thank you so much for your subscription. Today's uh, video is going to be about character assassination and how narcissists use this as a way to set a person up to suffer from anxiety. I know that's a long title, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what today's video is about, of course. <laughs> so this is about character assassination. Now, character assassination, uh, what does it consist of? Well, this is when an individual um, makes you appear to have a personality, uh, really, and a character, character traits that you do not have, such as being mean-spirited. Um, so they will set up a scenario sometimes, and usually narcissists do this, especially in a toxic or a dysfunctional family setting. Like if you have company, and maybe say one of the family members who was a, a narcissist, they may, you know, since you have company at the house, they may set up a scenario to make you appear to be a person that you really are not. You like, in, for other words, you might. In other words, you may come off as a person who is uh, mean-spirited. The narcissist may um, say something to you during the company. You know, you have people at the house, and the narcissist may be um, using sarcasm. You're, you know, maybe they are goading you into an argument, uh, but they are subtle about it. In other words, to onlookers, it may look like you are the person who is being difficult where really what's going on is that the narcissist is setting you up to appear that way. That's character assassina uh, assassination. When a person even sets up a scenario to make it seem like you have a character or characteristics or traits that you do not have or a personality that you do not have and the narcissist knows it. The narcissist pretty much, that's also another way that they assume your identity and sw do a switcheroo and make you have the characteristics that they really do have, such as being mean-spirited, being argumentative. So they will subtly do this. They will do this in a subtle manner. Like say if you have company at the house and uh, the onlookers, they may notice, but it will appear like you are the person who is being sour. You know, you're being a sour puss when really the narcissist is picking with you, but they're doing it in a subtle manner. So you look like, and they do this over and over, and they do this in front of uh, people on purpose. So they set up a scenario, sometimes the narcissist will set up a, a scenario so it looks or appears as if you are a person who is negative or has um, an unpleasant demeanor or unpleasant characteristic or faulty characteristic. But really what's going on is that the narcissist is picking on you. and again making it look like you're the person who is difficult you're the person who is not getting along with others right so some of you listening to this video maybe or, or looking at this video maybe you've been through this right so it's it's a it's a very um difficult thing to go through especially if it's uh, repeated for a long period of time but this is something that narcissists like to do especially in a dysfunctional family setting there you know when it comes to um, the family member who is appointed right unfortunately appointed to be the scapegoat this scenario usually plays out from the narcissist that's in the uh, dysfunctional family and they will pinpoint or you know they would uh, pinpoint the scapegoat and they will make the scapegoat look like the person who's the problem and the family, to aunts, uncles, who may be visiting the house, to aunts, uncles, cousins, and, and you know, if you're the scapegoat, and say the narcissist is your mom, she would use those opportunities to set you up, to make it look like you're the person in the family that doesn't get along with the rest of the family, for whatever reason. You're the problem. It's a very unfortunate and, um, very I think that's an evil act It's very w wicked and it's a situation that happens far too often especially in uh, the dysfunctional family setting where there's a scapegoat and there's a narcissistic parent so that's what I want to talk about in this video um, 
is character assassination and how narcissists use this to manipulative uh, to manipulate you into becoming a person who suffers from anxiety so they set that up when you're a little child or when you're a teenager usually it's when you're a child and they will set that up so that way when you become an adolescent when you become an adult you're a person who suffers from social anxiety you don't like to do things uh, that is uh, like a social setting you may not go to a lot of uh, social functions you tend to be more timid and shy you tend to be uncomfortable around crowds and okay this can this can be uh, you know can fall into the PTSD but I'm not talking about P PTSD today I'm talking about anxiety and how sometimes narcissists they set a person up via character assassination to suffer from anxiety social anxiety in particular so that way, when the narcissist is just systematically picking on this person over and over and over throughout the years, by the time this person becomes an adult, they don't want to be around people, right? Because they feel timid. They feel small. They feel like, you know, they, they feel very self-conscious. Uh, they lack confidence. And so their, their grades usually fail in school. Not all the time, but usually they do. Because again, this is, this is social anxiety. This person tend to not believe in themselves. They tend to not, um, again, be comfortable around others. And they tend to withdraw from others. And they tend to um, not go around and go, like say they can be invited to a party or any other social function. Somebody might invite them. This person who's been character, whose character has been assassinated by the narcissist, they tend to withdraw because they still have the programming that the narcissist downloaded in their subconscious mind, that they are, they're a loser. You know, they, they're not likable. They're someone that people will not love no matter what. You know, and, and then you, you start going into, uh, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny. I'm too unattractive, I'm too uh, weird, or uh, I'm too different. Um, people will not accept me, people will not embrace me because the narcissist says so. And the way the narcissist uh, convey that message to the scapegoat or you know the target is by, um, again, by Sub, or I'm sorry, they download that programming into the subconscious mind of the individual or of the target. So that way, by the time the target becomes older, yeah, they believe it's a false belief. It's a false belief that the narcissist has systematically and over and over again has downloaded and programmed into the target subconscious. So that way, they're, they're less likely to be really who they are. They are who the, who the narcissist says they are. And that's a very tragic and sad thing. And it happens very often, especially in a uh, dysfunctional family where it's toxic relationships and the narcissist is, a, is the parent or the grandparent. You know, it, it has to be somebody that has uh, a lot of influence in that social, I'm sorry, in that family setting. And it's usually the parents or the grandparents, you know, or the caregiver. And uh, the scapegoat is targeted for a character assassination. It's very sad. So they're, they're not confident. The target doesn't grow up to know who they really are. They're, they're less likely to interact with other people. They're less likely to drown into the background if, if they are out. They, they, they more than likely will not feel confident about their essence, who they are. They're less likely to try to find out who they are because, again, the programming that the narcissist has downloaded into the targets, which is usually the scapegoat in the family, into their subconscious mind. So that's what I, I really just wanted to talk about that because this is something that more and more people are uh, looking at you know it's not something that they were aware of 
um, at least not on a conscious level, they were not aware of it before. But now that they are looking at some of their um, childhood experiences and they're finding that they were severely abused, they were mistreated, not just physically, not just sexually, and not to belittle either one of those forms of abuse because they are tragic as well. But not only were they abused again physically and or sexually they were also abused uh, psychologically mentally and spiritually as well as emotionally so you have a whole lot of things going on here and the narcissists they just you know they do this and sometimes worse in a dysfunctional family setting because usually the narcissist is is the the head honcho they're the ones that's running the whole thing so unfortunately, whoever the scapegoat in the family is, is getting bombarded from all sides. From, you know, and it, it's, it leaves the person traumatized. So they're getting bombarded from every which turn. You know, every which way. They're getting bombarded by the narcissist. Because a lot of times, the narcissist just doesn't stop there. They recruit other family members to join in. So it's like a posse, it's like a gang. And they target whoever the uh, scapegoat or the black sheep is in the family. And it's, yes, it, it's very unfair. It sucks. But this is something I want to share with you guys is very much a reality for a lot of children who are being narcissistically injured by narcissistic parents. This is very real. And unfortunately, this is something that the narcissist is very good at um, making sure that others in the community don't know anything about. They keep it, you know, they keep it on the hush-hush. And again, I use the word subtle because when people do come over to the narcissist's house and, and the scapegoat is there and the scapegoat is being uh, targeted, right? It's subtle because the narcissist doesn't want to expose him or herself as being the bad guy. They want to make sure that the scapegoat is the one who's looked upon it like, hmm, what's wrong with that person? Why, do, why are they frowning? Why do they seem so sad? Or why are they not enjoying themselves like everybody else is? Why, why are they over there pouting? Why are they sitting over there in the corner, head down and pouting? What, they, what the onlookers don't realize and the narcissists realize, what's really going on is that that scapegoat is depressed. They're anxious. They're going through a whole lot of things that are causing them trauma because of the narcissist. That's what a lot of people don't realize when they're looking. They may be at the, the house and, every, you know, the music's going and people seem to be having a good time. But the scapegoat is not having a good time. The scapegoat is actually being not only targeted, but they're being tormented on a psychological in an emotional and a spiritual level that onlookers find it very hard to detect. That's because the narcissist sets it up that way. And what I'm describing now, I know is very horrific. It may be difficult for some of you to listen to this. If so, you know, turn off, turn off the video and maybe come back to it another time. But this is something that's very real. This is something that goes on in a lot of dysfunctional families, uh, households, especially when there is a scapegoat and there's a narcissistic parent. This is, I can pretty much guarantee you, this is what's happening in that house or in those households. And uh, it's very unfortunate because when that scapegoat gets, you know, becomes uh, of age or they become older, even when they leave the house, that that uh, programming is still in their subconscious, so they have they have some work to do. They got to work through it because they're being traumatized. And again, it gets a lot grimmer and deeper when that narcissist appoints other family members to join in, which they often do. They they have to get other family members, as many family members as possible, to join in and target that one family member who has appointed the scapegoat. So this goes on for years, guys. Repeated character assassination attempts. 
And unfortunately, the narcissist sometimes is very effective and they're very successful in their means or their aims to make that family member who is the scapegoat look like the bad guy or the bad gal. It, it, it happens a lot. Very tragic, very sad. And so I kind of wanted to go over that. Now, some of the things that um, the, the scapegoat usually starts feeling, and I went over some of these, but I'm gonna, gonna go over it again. Some of the things that they go and, and start, some of the things that the scapegoat starts to feel, right, is that they're too fat, they're too skinny, they're too different, right? No, they're too misunderstood. They're too something. They're very self-conscious. They become self-conscious. So this is where the social anxiety comes in. Because when a person is walking around and they're not confident in their core about who they are, what they stand for, what their values are, what their priorities are in life, what their standards are, they're not going to be able to go out into the world and have a have a, 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 a grounding and a very strong sense of self because the narcissist, again, has systematically break, broken that down when they were younger with the, with the programming that they put into the scapegoat's subconscious. They were, unfortunately, narcissists are very effective and they're very successful at this unfortunately so they start to feel so the the scapegoat who is now maybe not even in the household anymore they're less social they're less likely to socialize and be known or to know someone else they're less likely to do that because of the programming they don't feel good about themselves they don't really think much of themselves in other words Yes, because of the character assassination. Again, character assassination. Assassination to kill, to murder, to wipe out. So this is what the narcissist does for a repeated number of years. This is what they do to the scapegoat in the dysfunctional family. And they, they recruit, the narcissist recruits more family members to join in and gang up on that one family member who's the scapegoat right pretty grim stuff pretty dark pretty terrible however it's very real unfortunately this happens to many children as they grow up in a dysfunctional family where there's a narcissist and sometimes this scapegoat even gets it from their siblings no matter if they're the youngest no matter if they're the middle child no matter if they are um, the oldest or the eldest 